Welcome back to Small Caps. My name is Kerry Stevenson today, bringing you some really exciting copper gold story, nickel, all sorts of things. These guys are very busy. Salt and Resources, the ASX code is SLZ. Joining me today is Steve Groves. He's the managing director of said Salt and Resources. Steve, wonderful to see you. Thank you so much for joining me on Small Caps today. Thanks, Kerry. It's great to be here. First up, before we get into the detail, let's just remind our uh, listeners out there what who are Salt and Resources. Salt and Resources are, are a junior expression company we listed on the ASX in about August 2018. So we've been around for about three years. We listed on the back of a number of mainly gold assets in WA. And uh, about a year ago, just over a year ago, we branched out into the Lachlan Fold Belt, we had a fantastic opportunity to pick up an asset in a Lachlan Fold Belt, a porphyry copper gold asset, a number of assets. And we've been focusing on that mostly in the last 12 months, but also working up some nickel projects in, in Western Australia that have some uh, similarities to the Julemar discovery by Chalice. Ah, and for those of you that don't know what the Julemar discovery was, uh, that was a Chalice uh, mining that made this massive PGE discovery. And it was quite... It took the market a little bit by surprise and got them all very excited, didn't it, Steve? Oh, absolutely. It was a fantastic discovery and uh, and we think it's a very real um, analogy to what we're, we're searching for out there in the same belt of rocks. So that's very Okay, exciting. so before I go on to uh, what you're doing in the Lachlan Fold Belt, because that's actually in here in New South Wales, one of my favourite areas, because goodness me, that's suddenly coming of age, so to speak. Can we just go over to Western Australia to this Julemar like discover? What have you got over there? What have you done? And why has it got you excited? Okay, so when we we floated on the, the back of WA Gold Assets, the flagship project was in Lake Grace, in the Lake Grace area. So about 230 kilometers um, southeast of Perth. Okay. So we've got a fairly large land holding there, about 700 and something kilometers squared. And uh and initially, it's very prospective for gold. So there's uh, our neighbours of the Gold Road Resources who are, who are searching wow. very uh, heavily there and, and, and certainly committed on a conceptual basis. This this terrain is, it's it's a bit like the, say, the Kalgoorlie terrain, if you will, greenstone terrain, but being metamorphosed. So it's a little bit more going on there. So it's traditionally not as well explored, if you will. So that that there, therein lies opportunity. So... Mm. Fantastic gold potential, and, and initially we were looking at that. But also, um, in the historic records, there there's ultramafic rocks. So ultramafic rocks are the host rocks to the the style of deposit like Julemar, and uh, they contain mm. nickel, copper, cobalt, and the PGE minerals. So we had recognised that in historical records in the 1960s, the company drilled some of these ultramafic rocks in our tenure. And uh, they hit grains of, of sulphide minerals. So sulphide minerals are what you mine, and and they had these sulphide minerals. They analyze them, and they contain nickel, and they contain copper. So that's that's a hugely con conceptual win that you've got the right rocks, and you've actually got sulphides, which doesn't always occur in these terrains. Okay. So that that was a fantastic um, piece of history for us. So we know we're in the right environment, um, and then of course. Whilst we're setting up to, to explore the area, the Julemar discovery was made and, and it just confirmed our interpretations. And it also, you know, it, it led to a land grab in the area. So our, our tenure now is surrounded by Anglo-American. Oh, wow. A similar style of, of, of deposit. So it's it's confirmed our, our geological interpretations and, and the great discovery of, of Julemar has also confirmed the potential to to discover so what you, could be. Did you have this area before the Julemar discovery? Uh, so you'd already had that, number one. And number two, has then, you mentioned that there was some drilling done in the 60s. Has there been very much else done on it? How did you get a hold of it? How did, how did you get a hold of this ground? No, well, there's been no work, and particularly for nickel, uh, since the 60s. That's the only work that's been done. Oh, okay. um, you, when we acquired the, the the ground, it was you know through a third party, a, 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 like a, just a private guy, a prospector who'd recognised the potential for both gold and nickel. So we were always aware of that potential. And one of the first things we did was to fly some uh, magnetic surveys over the ground, and and the, the rock types, the ultramafic rock types that, that are associated with these nickel and PGE deposits are very magnetic. So we've we are, yeah. identified the existing one that we knew about that our crops and that was drilled but also a lot of strike of um, similar looking um, 
rock types potentially based on their magnetic magnetic response. So it was so we could have a lot of that material on the ground, and that's something we're going to look at in in the coming months. We're, we're looking to go and and do some air core drilling and, and things like that to to verify if those those anomalies from the magnetics are also ultramafic rock types, and it gives us a, a large target or many targets potentially to explore, which is fantastic. So the same sort of geological structure as, as, as Julemar, is it, in the same sort of rock? So that's why you're saying this could be this could be something pretty interesting, but the news flow will come towards the back end of this year. Would that be right? Yeah, that would be fair. And, and I guess to put it into sort of geological context, um, you know, they, they call these zones mobile belts. Where, so that's just a, a bunch of old rocks that are being sheared and, and metamorphosed a bit. And uh, and that's that's what Julemar is hosted in. And that, that belt of mobile belt of rocks is interpreted to extend all the way down towards Lake Grace and, and beyond Lake and you Grace. Got your, and you've got your foot on some of it and there's news yeah. to come. Is that correct? That, that's exactly right, Kerry. All righty. <laughs> so watch this space for what's happening over in Western Australia. Any other projects over in Western Australia that you're focused on, or just that one, that just the Lake Grace? Uh, we've got some some nice gold assets over there. Again, at Lake Grace, there's there's a very large, you know, gold anomalous system there that we've done some drilling and and we've got, you know, so we, we're defining a, a very large area of mineralized rock, but probably not economic at this stage. And that's always the challenge is to find the economic part. But certainly, a large gold mineralizing system exists on that ground as well. And that, you know, it's the sort of thing Gold Road Resources would be looking for. So, you know, we know we're in the right address. We've got good neighbours and, and we've, all, we've got those initial signs that have proven the concept. And, and now the, the hard work begins on finding, you know, the jewel in the crown, as it were. And it yeah. only takes one of those little drill bits to start finding that jewel in the crown. So that's ongoing work. Lots of news flow in the second, in the, towards the back end of this year. Let's go across here to New South Wales, if we could, Steve, because... You've got your foot on some land in the Lachlan Fold Belt and you've started a maiden diamond drill program. So what's happening over here and why has that got a big smile on your face? Yes, uh, look, fantastic ground. So the opportunity to acquire this asset came to us uh, towards the start of last year and uh, we jumped on it immediately. We could we could see that um, this was, was excellent exploration ground right in, in the thick of the Lachlan Fold Belt. So the, the, the prime target there is midway between Cadia and, and Boda in the same belt of rocks. And, you know, we moved very quickly to acquire that, which was a great, um, a great move by the board. And, and we've had feedback from other companies. They're all, they're all jealous, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, that's the beauty of being in a, in a, a junior. You, you, you have to be dynamic. You have to be able to move quickly. And, and we certainly were able to do that. And, uh, and for those that at... don't know, sorry to interrupt you, Steve. For those that don't know, Cadia and Boda, uh, they're big mines out in that area. Uh, are you along the same sort of structure? I mean, why why is that of importance? Okay, so Cadia is is a huge porphyry copper gold deposit, multiple deposits in the one one terrain, but it's it's enormous. One of Australia's biggest uh, copper gold mines. One of the world's biggest copper gold. One of the world's really. biggest, yeah. Um, and so that's that area. Everyone would love to have Acadia, and uh, and Boda, which is about a hundred kilometres north of of Acadia. So that's a, a porphyry discovery, porphyry copper gold discovery, which looks very large and it's fairly recent by Alcane. Okay. And and they they're in the same belt of rocks in the Lachlan Fold belt. The, the Ordovician, which is the age of this volcanic sequence, that hosts these particular type of copper gold porphyries. They're called alkalic porphyries, but um, that belt of rock, these volcanic rocks in the in the Lock and Fold belt rocks extends up through where where our ground is, and uh, and we're coincidentally midway between Cadia and Boda in similar. Oh wow! Rock. Okay, and and in similar rock formation, same structure. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean specific structures, probably not so much, but the same rocks, the same equivalent volcanic rocks. Okay. Which is, is important in, in you know, the, the formation of these things. Time is timing or, or you know, the, the, the time of formation is, is quite is, is important in terms of what's going on geologically at that particular time. Yeah. So what has this maiden drill program 
told you about what you have here in this particular area? Okay, so, uh, you know, initially, I'll, I'll just touch on on some of the work you, you do in, in finding these, you know, you do geochemistry. That'd be great. Yeah, we, so you do surface geochemistry, you, you do geophysics, and you do mapping um, to, to understand the rock type. So, you know, all that work has verified that we're in a very analogous um, setting to Acadia. So we see many of the same features at surface as what you would see at, at Acadia-style deposits. So in terms of the rock types, the alteration minerals. So these, these if you can imagine, these, these porphyries are related to um, intrusions, which cause a, a large, subtle alteration effect on the surrounding rocks. Okay. And so, but but often the actual mineralization be quite deep, can be quite deep. You know, three, four, five, six, seven hundred meters deep. But, but but there there's a very large footprint that these things leave. So we we search for that at surface, and that's indicated by the geophysics, the geochemistry. So we look for copper and gold and a whole lot of geochemical pathfinder elements, which are quite unique. And and I wouldn't you wouldn't expect these things to occur just in in a paddock in the middle of New South Wales. Right. Okay. They occur for a reason. They're there for a reason, and not over here for a reason. They're here. Right. And so we have a magnetic signature that that indicates you know an intrusive complex. So we we've got the right kind of um, you know rocks in the area. We, we can see the alteration at surface. So these rocks aren't how they were when they were intruded or, or they were formed. They've, they've gone through some change because um, something's happening, some mineralizing system is occurring. Um, we see the right types of, of chemistry associated with that. And and also, you know, I mean, which is the best part of it, we're seeing copper and gold, high grade copper and gold at surface. Um, at surface, to, okay. Yeah, so we're up to 25% copper, 25 grams per tonne gold in some areas. Really? Yeah, and that's, um, that's crazy. Yeah, and and so that's what that tells us. It, that 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 in itself may not be the primary target there, but it's telling us that these fluids that are causing this alteration are fertile. They're carrying copper and gold, mm. and in the right setting, they're depositing large amounts of copper and gold. And that's you know ultimately we need to find that in a, in a, a large volume. Um, but so we, explain, we, with the drilling that you've done, how deep did you go for that drilling, and what what was it? That you, what were you looking to achieve with this first maiden drilling program? Uh, yeah, that that's a great question because, again, in these systems, um, you're sort of playing a bit of a long game looking for the porphyries. They they are, you know, they they have a big footprint, but they're actually quite difficult to find. The, <laughs> the economic part of it. Um, so with the drilling, we were targeting the combination of our, our good surface geochemistry with the geophysics. And uh, so we have magnetic signature, which is strong. But we also used a technique called IP, which, which you know, measures the, um, the level, the amount of sulfides in the ground, disseminated sulfides, which are usually a, a part of this alteration halo. So pyrite and, and possibly chalcopyrite, which is a copper sulfide. And, and so we're, t we're targeting that because that is a really leaves a really big footprint. And, and okay. by targeting that, you can start to understand the intensity of alteration and, and where you, you go to next. So the first drilling was targeting this, what we were interpreting as a disseminated halo of pyrite, which is an alteration mineral associated with these sorts of um, mineralizing systems. And, and we weren't really drilling, you know, for the mother load. It was really to understand what what do the geophysics mean? What what sort of alteration are we seeing in the ground? What do the rock types look like? And, and why is that? Why is that? Sorry to interrupt you again, Steve. Why is that important to do that at this early stage? Because these things can can be quite deep. So Boda, the discovery is at seven hundred meters depth. So so okay. you can't really just turn up and put in a seven hundred meter deep hole, in, you know, without a bit more knowledge. It's expensive and. <laughs> You know what do you do if you don't hit something? So you tend to vector towards that hole. Okay. So you, so you just every stage of exploration is building that knowledge to to put in your your target hole, your deep hole, in the best place possible to find to make the discovery. And and this might not be seven hundred meters deep, but you know, and, You've got and to allow for that. Yeah, and because it's diamond drilling, it's it's quite expensive. So we we don't want to also commit overcommit to say, well, we're going to come in and drill ten or so holes and spend a couple of million dollars and not know where we're doing it. You want to make sure you're putting your holes in the best place possible. So this 
maiden drill program was was really to say, are we in the right area? Are we getting, you know, down the drill hole? Are we seeing indications that things are getting more interesting, more intense? What's what do the minerals look like? All those sort of things. And, and in terms of that, we achieved that. We got um, really exactly the right sort of alteration minerals and 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 um, and, and sort of uh, textures. And we even got some some specks of copper and, and things like that in there. We're not expecting, we haven't got the assays yet. We're not expecting numbers from this drilling. This is really information collecting. And to that Has end. Has it surprised you to the upside a little bit? I mean, you know, you because when you first get ground, it's, you know, it's dirt, isn't it? It's just dirt. But after you start to do a little bit of the IP, after you start to do a little bit of um, electromagnetic um, surveys, et cetera, has it, has it given you more confidence that the ground that you've got here in the Lachlan Fold Belt is going to be quite quite good for you to look for that copper gold porphyry? Absolutely. You know, I I, I tell people if if you had to, if you would wanted to sit down and and come up with a hypothetical model of what what these sort of systems should look like in the Lachlan Fold Belt in terms of their geochemistry, their geophysics, etc., you couldn't come up with a better one than, than what we have. Now that's, you know, the, the, everything looks perfect. So, which is great, but then you still got to make that discovery in it with the drill, drill bit. And, and that's so, where the excitement comes, isn't it? Yeah. So what's, what can shareholders and also those that are listening today, investors that are out there, what's the next, what's the news flow from uh, Big Hill going forward? Uh, well, the next step, we're, we're going to look at a, a project that's, Part of the Big Hill complex. So this is a very large uh, complex, um, and you get multiple potential mineralization styles associated in these systems. So at, at Katy, you have the main, you know, a number of porphyry systems, copper gold, but also associated that we have um, peripheral deposits. They're called scan deposits, which can be higher grade copper gold. Mm -hmm. Smaller, they're not as big as the porphyries, but they can be quite quite nice additions to a porphyry system. So we have a, a few targets like that. And the main one is, is Razorback Ridge. Now this is, is really interesting because it's a ridge. It's got outcropping copper and gold mineralization sticking out of the ground for over a kilometer along wow. a structure. And, and this has never been looked at. This is in the middle of very civilized farming country in New South Wales and no one's ever sampled this thing before. And it, it sticks out of the ground. And it's, it's what we would classify as a scan style deposit, which just means it's got those fluids from the, the porphyry system interacting with, with limestones and, and things like that, that have a strong chemical reaction. They cause certain minerals that's, that you can identify and, and copper and gold. So at surface, we've got 2.65% copper and, and over two grams gold. Um, yeah, and it's mineralized for, for over a kilometer. It's, it's wide. It's... Um, you know, it's it's quite incredible that it's just sitting there. No one what are the there. relationships like with the farming community out there for you to be doing this drilling? Is that uh, you've got good relationships with the locals? Yeah, we do. And, you know, obviously we we understand it's a sensitive area. It's it's nice farming district. It's, um you know, it can be subject to weather and, and, and it's quite damp out there at the moment. So we're mindful of, of all those things. But we have very good relationships with, with the local, the farmers. Um, it's a... You know, we actually understand that they're a prime stakeholder in any of any exploration project. So we, yeah. we must do what's right by by the landowners and any of the stakeholders. But but certainly, that most landowners and farmers in particular are quite interested in, in what you're doing. And, and I find when you go and stand on the paddock and you say, "This is what we'd like to do," and I go, "Oh well, there's some rocks over on that hill there. I'd like you to come and have a look at." And then, oh wow, that's good. That's you know, good. That, that often happens. So it's. You know, you build those relationships and usually they're, you know, you, you aim to have them mutually beneficial for everyone. All right. So these early results for you uh, have been very encouraging. Uh, more drilling going to be happening ongoing. Uh, what's what, what are your thoughts? Is that where your focus is at the moment or is there other areas that you're going to be looking at? We've got quite a, a portfolio in the Lock and Fold Belt. So Big Hill, including the Razorback Ridge, um, Prospect, which we're, we're aiming to drill in in the coming you know month or two, is um, that's that's the flagship in that that sort of portfolio. But yeah. north on the same uh, license, north we have another project called Ringaroo, which is another porphyry project. Again, it's got the geophysics, the geochemistry, everything you would expect or hope to see in a porphyry system. It actually sits like 
part of the same magnetic signature that impact minerals have just drilled at Aspley. So right. they're just on the just over the the tenure boundary. They've been doing some drilling, um, and you know we've we've got a, a fantastic drillable target there. We've done the IP and and and, and the geochemistry. So that's the, they're waiting to go. We also have the Tuckland deposit, which we drilled early this year and late last year, which is further to the, the northeast towards Mudgee. And that's another, you know, we, we feel, feel there's epithermal gold potential there. Certainly it services outcropping mineralization with um, features of epithermal style mineralization. Um, it, it also has very nice IP, very nice geophysics, very nice geochemistry, all the ingredients you're looking for. And we did some, some drilling out there about six months or so ago. And uh, we didn't actually get to test the, the the epithermal gold target. We actually drilled an IP anomaly, which was in, in slightly different geology. But what we ended up finding was a, a very large um, silver mineralized system. Oh, okay. So, and that, that was somewhat of a surprise. But when we looked at it and looked at where we were, we're not far from the, the Bodum's silver deposit. Right. And certainly immediately to the northwest of, of Silver Minders' tenure. So maybe, you know, there's a silver flavour to the, the Loch Nefold Belt in that part of the world. And uh, and, and we just scratched the edge of, of that based on our subsequent um, soil sampling. Uh, we've got a very strong silver anomaly that extends to the east of that drilling, which we've not gone back to look at yet. Um, so we've got, got the sense that this might be quite a large silver mineralising system to be discovered there. Plus, we've got the original epithermal gold target, which we've we've not adequately tested, but it's still there, and that's that's mineralization that we can we can see its surface, and there's porphyry potential. So you know, it's <laughs> it's all going on. <laughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Steve's got a geological background, so you can tell he's pretty excited because he's got all these different things he's going to do. I want to package it all up, uh, Steve, and go. Okay, so the focus for investors for those people that are listening to us at the moment is the focus big hill at the moment because you've got all this or are you are you going to be putting a, a hand across all of them at the moment where's where's your focus yeah, well the two focuses are big hill and, okay. and certainly the razorback ridge where where we have mineralization at surface so we feel it's something we can assess with the shallower drill holes and, and certainly got the um sense of scale that we've got you know over a kilometer of our crop, cropping mineralization so that's a short-term target. Plus, the uh, the WA, the Lake Grace nickel. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's that's cool. something we'd love to work up. And you know, obviously, you know, if we could find something similar to a Julemar style deposit, we'd you know, we'd, we'd be very happy with that. So, well, it, so sounds, two, it, 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 it sounds like that you're in the right jurisdiction, I guess, for a, a Julemar style. But we're, listen, ladies and gentlemen, we're not saying anything because nothing's been found at the moment. So don't get overexcited. But it sounds like at least you've got the right um, the right ground and it seems to me like you're, you're you're doing the right work to be able to make a major discovery now we're running out of time Steve I say this to all of my interviewees tell our listeners why you think right now is a good time for them to sit up and take notice of Sultan resources and as I said at the beginning a ASX code is SLZ ladies and gentlemen so Steve give us the three reasons that you think that uh, investors this is the right time right time right place right time right place thanks care well look based hopefully you got the sense that based on uh, all the things we've discussed we're poised for a tier one or poised for discovery and tier one terrains i think you know we, we can certainly demonstrate that we're in the right address we've got fantastic ground we've done all the hard work in in the early stages of exploration so we're at that drill stage and, and we're poised for discovery and, and major discovery uh, the company has got a really hard uh, uh, capital structure. There's only 70 million shares on issue. So we're really leveraged to any wow. discovery that we make. Yeah. Um, so, and, and any, you know, in these terrains, it would just be company transformative. So we're, we're really, you know, there's a real opportunity there for shareholders. And, and thirdly, we've got the right team to make these discoveries, particularly in the Lock and Fold Belt. Our, our, our team is is recognised as Lachlan Folbout porphyry experts who are doing the, the work for us on the ground there, and you know they're the best in the business. They they consult the new mines and new crests in the area. So, oh, okay. you know, and, and they've done fantastic work up to this point, and uh, and you know we look forward to their engagement 
going further, you know, going, going forward. They know so, their hood. They know their hood. Well, they absolutely do. And, uh, you know, certainly, you know, just in summary, we're poised for tier one discovery, but we're complete, completely geared to that given, given our share structure and we've got the right team doing that work for us. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it from the Steve himself, the Managing Director of Salton Resources. They are poised for discovery in the tier one areas that they've got, both in WA and in New South Wales, very tightly held with only 70 million shares and a fabulous team. Steve, thank you so much for joining us on Small Caps today. Thanks very much, Kerry. Appreciate that.